Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about some amazing furniture pieces and ideas that people tell you are dated and to get rid of, but I say keep them. And we're starting this video off with a basic, a basic thing that everybody knows you are familiar with, but needs to be addressed. And that is the modular sofa. Now modular sofas are not new, but they're maybe not the most popular thing at this moment. Right now we're favoring singular sofas that are, you know, one piece that don't come apart and that's what a modular sofa is. Each of the pieces or seats are individual and can be used and connected or combined together to create a number of shapes which offers a lot of customization. I think these sofas are wonderful and amazing and they're very versatile for a lot of homes. Even though right now we are liking a sofa it has a little bit more of a formal feel but we're also layering in things that are a little more informal, a modular sofa can be wonderful. Often these are referred to as a sectional, but they can actually be anything you want. They could be a sofa, an extra long sofa. They could be a sectional or a U-shaped sectional, or they could even be a sofa and a chair. You can use each of the individual pieces however you want. These are fantastic for people that are looking for good quality furniture that will last them a lifetime but will grow with them. So if you have, you know, that studio apartment, a modular sofa can be great. You can get two pieces and then when you get that one bedroom, you get three pieces. And when you, you know, have a family and kids and you're moving into a house, you can get four or five more pieces and have it be as big as you want. These are also really great if you have just an awkward or weird sized recess or niche. You can get as many pieces as you need that fill that up perfectly. I think the most important thing to remember when you are looking for a modular sofa is that you want one that connects. These pieces will slide apart if they don't connect in some way and it will be a nightmare. And if you have one of these sofas that slides apart, here's a little tip, a little pro hack that I love. I take zip ties and wrap them around the feet. Don't make them too tight, but it will keep your pieces from sliding apart and getting those awkward gaps that crumbs, that dog hair, that dust and dirt gets into, saving you a little bit on having to clean them. Modular sofas can actually be quite informal, but the next thing we have to talk about is not that, and that is the Berger chair. This is a style of chair that was created in the late 17th century and actually has enclosed arms. Typically in a French style, this chair was actually very popular and still is however it falls into the more traditional realm and you often see this in cottage design also because it does have a very formalized structure to it but can be quite comfortable i think these are fantastic and the reason these became so popular was actually because of the cost of materials wealthy people at the time loved to show off that they could afford a lot of things like caning and fabrics and so these chairs were upholstered in them because you had more of them and that was quite impressive at the time Time. I think these are fantastic because they're closed in on their sides, they have a comfortable look to them, but they actually work beautifully in a formal space, meaning you get the elegance and sophistication of that formal design, that more elegant feature, but you're getting the comfort of that chair being very relaxing, very comfortable, and could work beautifully in a living room. To take an informal or relaxed space and add a little bit of that sophistication to it that makes it feel just a bit more elevated. The more classic style of these chairs actually is kind of considered a little bit dated right now, but definitely is something you should be on the lookout for. Snag them at a great deal because once these come back on trend, they are going to be impossible to find, and I love that for you. Now the Berger chair may not be for you and if that's the case it's all right I personally can't relate but what you will love is the chaise lounge that is the pronunciation of this piece a chaise it's not a chase it's not a fainting couch it is a chaise lounge. These are often connected to sectional sofas and they kind of have a footrest there attached to it. This is a modern take on the chaise lounge. Typically they would be an independent piece of furniture and these are fantastic. They kind of fell out of fashion after the mid-century era. Why? I don't know. Probably because of the popularity of a day bed. Mid-century design has kind of this cross between a chaise lounge and a day bed which was very popular so be on the lookout for those also, but a chaise lounge is fantastic. It can definitely add some great elegance, some formality into a space, but these are very, very useful pieces of furniture. You could relax on them. You can cuddle up and watch a movie or read a book. They also serve as a great form of seating that's very structured and you 
actually sit upright on so they can be wonderful for a formal area, but also they have the usage that makes them comfortable for a more informal space. I see these all the time upholstered in beautiful fabrics like leathers and velvets that are actually available on marketplace sites for practically nothing. You also see a lot of great carving, intricate details on these, and those pieces are maybe considered a little bit dated right now, but they are definitely coming back and they're gonna come back big time, so do not make the mistake of not snatching one up right now. I think these are fantastic and fit into most styles, or you could actually get something that completely juxtaposes your style and that always creates a lot of character and makes the space feel very unique and interesting. Also, these have a little bit of that asymmetry that we love to incorporate into a space. So get one of these and flank it with something heavier on one side and it'll look beautiful in your home. I love a chaise lounge when it's pronounced correctly and don't be in the comment section calling it a fainting couch, okay? It's a chaise. Let's get it together. Yes, I see you all all of the time in the comment section because that is one of the things that will never become dated or go out of style on this channel. We love having you here, we love being here, and we appreciate all of you. So if you haven't already, be sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button, join us, become a part of the Le Chic family, and give this video a like. The next thing we have to talk about is something that <laughs> beautiful people can relate to, and I know from personal experience, that is the Cheval mirror. The Cheval mirror was popularized or kind of created, invented, if you will, during the Victorian era when mass production and the Industrial Revolution was happening because glass of this size was very rare. This mirror has a stand and typically pivots back and forth. It could even be flipped around and have some sort of decorative feature on the back of it because, because not everybody wanted to have a mirror out all of the time. I personally can't relate to that, but that's not the point. The Cheval mirror is fantastic, especially for those of you that don't want to hang up a big oversized mirror. Maybe you're renting somewhere. Maybe you're in a temporary housing situation. Maybe you just like to move the mirror around to get a little different view of whatever's happening at the time. Love that for you, the Cheval mirror is great because it's on the floor. It's not just leaning in a corner and if you live in an earthquake zone, you're, you're done for, okay? This is a great piece. I think it's really fantastic and we don't see it often enough. Today and modern designs of this usually are made out of metal because it's just easier, cheaper, and more affordable, but you can find some really beautiful Victorian style pieces and even mid-century style pieces. Sometimes you just need that extra little piece in a corner or to go somewhere and you don't don't want to inconvenience yourself by having like a fake plant or something you're not going to use. It gives this space a very boudoir style feeling and I think that is wonderful. Be sure you are on the lookout for these because they're fantastic but can kind of be hard to find. Mirrors at the time were very difficult to make in a large scale, which is why you often see window panes and mirrors very small because glass making was just not easy to do until the Industrial Revolution, at which point we see a lot more of these created. Be sure you are looking out for them on marketplace sites. Antique dealers will often have these. Ask if they have some that you're looking for. Be sure you're on the lookout for auction websites and go online and check some out. These are fantastic mirrors and can definitely elevate a space and give something that is unexpected. Even though maybe these are a little bit dated, people are liking a bigger oversized wall hung mirror, this may be the more convenient thing for you in your home. We have to talk about something that was popular, very popular actually for a period of time, but we don't see a lot of today and is worth mentioning. And that is dental molding. Dental molding is actually a form of trim that often was created using wood or even plaster sometimes. You see this more often outside of homes on their exterior facades or in place of crown molding. I think it's fantastic. I love dental molding. You do sometimes see this on furniture pieces, typically in the more neoclassic or empire style, and that's okay, we love those. Dental molding is fantastic. It is a series of blocks and spaces that create I, don't, I wouldn't say it looks like dental or teeth, but it creates a symmetrical pattern of raised and lowered or flat elements. I think dental molding is fantastic. It definitely adds a sense of scale and proportion to a space. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, I want some of that on my crown molding or in my space, 
you know, look for some taller ceilings, but this is a great feature, a detail to look for in furniture because it's quite rare and has a strong sense of elegance. I love dental molding. I think it's a fantastic feature and not something we see architecturally very much today. I think it's beautiful and definitely be on the lookout for a piece or a piece of architecture that has this. I love dental molding because it's such a beautiful detail, but we have to talk about something that you see often on furniture, but not everybody knows the name for or has the name for, and that is marquetry. Marquetry is a symmetrical inlay of wood, typically in a floral motif. You sometimes see curves or arches. This is inlaid and it's very hard to do. You typically only see this with veneered woods because the shapes are cut out of the veneer before they're laid down. And this is very interesting, very ornate and beautiful. You see this more often in Italian craftsmanship. It's actually a very, very kind of big industry in Italy. If you've ever been, you'll see it all over the place. There's shops that have it. I actually have a beautiful jewelry box that has marquetry on it. It's inlaid. And the inverse of this or the opposite of this is parquetry, which is actually symmetrical or straight lines of inlaid wood. I actually have a lot of this in my home because it's a detail I love to see. It definitely has a traditional feel to it, but it actually is very interesting, very unique, and uses a mix of wood. You typically will see something that's like a mahogany inlaid with a satin wood. This is very interesting and it creates kind of these borders or boundaries on a piece of furniture. This is wonderful if you like to mix wood tones or if you like to curate a lot of different wood tones into your space. You could do a tone of wood on your floor, another for the furniture pieces. That chair over there could be something different. We can have a burled wood piece over here and you can mix a lot of different wood tones together if you look for a piece that has marquetry or parquetry in it. I know some of these are a little bit different. Maybe you don't hear about them all of the time every day. And that's the point. I don't wanna share with you things that everybody is already talking about. I wanna encourage you to be creative and create a unique and interesting space using some cool, unexpected and different elements or features, especially when it comes to some of the furniture pieces in your home. With that said, there is something I love that you are probably familiar with, but is actually very functional, works beautifully in a home and is worth mentioning, and that's a nesting table. Nesting tables are a series of tables, two or more, that slide into one another. And they typically stack up into kind of a nest of them. They stack up one under another and they take up very little floor space for the amount of table space you actually have. And you're getting smaller tables that you can place around your space, the living room or your office, whatever that space is, and you actually get a lot of functionality out of them. Nesting tables serve as great end tables or even just occasional tables that you can move around. A, a guest can put their drink on or, or you can even take one of them and say, put it by that chair so I can put my book on it. Nesting tables are fantastic because you're getting a lot of table for your money. Nesting tables come in all sorts of styles. You can find them from completely contemporary, ultra modern, mid-century down to empire style. There's so many beautiful tables out there and the nesting table is definitely one of the most convenient forms of it you can bring into your space. In my home, I like to layer tables together or tables in ottomans and this is based on a nesting table. So I'll stack two or three different things together to create the illusion of something bigger or longer or a more elongated shape for a coffee table. I think that works out beautifully as well. Nesting tables make for great end tables, occasional tables, coffee tables. Be on the lookout for them because they can definitely add a lot of functionality and elevate your space. While they may not be the most popular thing right now, we're kind of favoring pedestals, they definitely are not something you should write off. Now that we talked about some interesting, unique, and different furniture pieces, interior design elements you should be bringing into your home, let's talk about some overpriced interior design trends you should steer clear of and we can leave in the past. Be sure you check out this video right over here and I will see you over there.